guys, it is a brutally cold and ugly uh, day here in the end times in the former paradise of South Austin, Texas, where I think it's a little bit colder than it is in Anchorage, Alaska right now. And But we're going to, uh, it is Sunday, December 31st, 2017. We have made it to the end of this, uh, end of this year. And I cannot think of a better way to celebrate the end of 2017 with beginning a brand new feature for 2018, which I'm going to call, uh, we'll see what reaction this gets, from my, my first guest from Voices of the Doomosphere, where every Tuesday night, Humpty Dumpty Tribe is going to uh, have a casual conversation with one of my Humpty Dumpty Tribe heroes, and I am absolutely honored and thrilled to kick off my brand new Humpty Dumpty Tribe feature of 2018, Voices of the Doomosphere, with my hero, climatologist Paul Beckwith. It has been way too long for me to make this call. And so I think every one of you probably already knows who Paul is. But just for, just for good times, Paul, say hello to Humpty Dumpty Tribe and give us your, your usual uh, hello to the world. Hello. Uh, it's, it's great to be here on, on the last day of uh, 2017. Everybody's... You know, uh, we're excited about tonight, New Year's, and, uh, you know, to ring in the new year. I think they've done it already in Australia. So. Oops, we're losing you, Paul. Oh, we're waiting. <laughs> well, we're talking to Canada, so, uh, so there yeah, might so, be some interruptions in our Skype call. You, you didn't give us yeah. your hello, I'm Paul Beckwith from Universal. Yeah, right, That's the right. one hello, we want to hear, Beckwith. brother. Okay, hello. I'm Paul Beck with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology, and I also teach at the uh, Carleton, Un Carleton University Department of Geography, and right now it's about minus 20 degrees Celsius, which is about minus 10 degrees Fahrenheit, and after uh, we finish this interview, I'm, I've got a garden hose and a hot water source, so I'm going to go and adjust the nozzle on the hose and make all kinds of snow and weird patterns and stuff. You know, you've probably seen them on the web. You know, you fire hot water out into the cold air and it makes ice crystals instantly. So oh. that'll be an uh, interesting experiment. You know, that way I can know what I'm talking about, about in terms of thickening the sea ice in the Arctic to refreeze the ice, right? You're, you're going to start right now. Anyway, I'm going to, uh, I just want to let people know, uh, how, how I first heard of you, Paul, and uh, I, I was living in St. Croix in the jungle, and one of my Alert Tribes members sends me this this video of this this guy saying, Hammond, you got to check this guy out. He is badass. He is promoting nuclear war between India and Pakistan as a way of, of saving the planet from the ravages of climate change. And I'm thinking that is one badass dude to be. Uh, are, are you still are you still promoting uh, nuclear war between India and Pakistan to save the save the planet? No, I, I don't think promoting is. Uh is the word I, I've ever used or would choose. I, um, I I did have a video or two talking about what would happen if uh, certain country, countries started firing off uh, some of their nuclear arsenal and how that would create what is known as a nuclear winter, which would cause a cooling across the planet. So I wasn't advocating or suggesting these things be done. I was just saying in the event that this happened, this is what we have to look forward to, nuclear winter, which a lot of people have forgotten about. Um, it's sort of the human version of, of uh, a massive uh, volcano going off, putting sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere, the upper atmosphere, to cool the planet. Um, like Pinatubo cooled the global, lower global temperatures about half a degree for up to three years. Uh, the year without a summer, 1815 to 1816, I guess that was Tambora, volcano on the Indonesian islands, and it caused the 
temperature to drop about a degree Celsius for three to five years. In fact, the snow that fell in North America in the winter stayed all summer. It didn't leave thus the year without a summer. So nuclear nuclear war. So about, I talked uh, about the yeah. My now now yeah, my yeah, interview no, yeah, with your video and Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and then I interview with your your um, your your buddy uh, Guy McPherson and my your yours and my buddy both. Guy he he told me that you want to save the planet by blowing up the planet. This was a quote Guy made to me a few weeks ago. Is uh, would you like to respond? Yes. To? Well, I think uh, I think that uh, Guy should watch uh, my video. I highly recommend people to watch the video I did on this because in no way did I advocate <laughs> that this be done. I explained the physics of what would happen yeah. if, uh, you know, if these things, if, if nukes were unleashed and uh, what the effect would be on, on climate. And another video that was misconstrued, which is along the same lines, is um, when I talk about the anthropogenic Arctic volcano, that's like a metaphor uh, for, you know, if we put sulfur dioxide in the stratosphere over the Arctic, it would cause a cooling of the Arctic in the summer. And it's a metaphor. The anthropogenic Arctic volcano is not actually triggering a volcano in the Arctic or anything. It's actually just, it's a, you know, it's a metaphor for, for seeding the stratosphere to, to cool the planet, which is what volcanoes do if, they, if they're large enough and they're pointed upwards. Some volcanoes are pointed sideways, like Mount St. Helens had no effect on climate because the side of the mountain blew off. And, and all the gases and ash and sulfur dioxide and everything went sideways. It didn't go up. It's got to go up to the stratosphere. Now, so it depends on where you are on the planet. If you're near the equator, that's 17 kilometers. That's as high as this, the troposphere, the lower atmosphere goes, where all the weather occurs. If you're at the um, North Pole or South Pole, the air is a lot colder. Um, it's only 7 kilometers. The, 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 so that altitude to the stratosphere varies depending on where you are. Well, I want, I, I do want to get to, uh, I definitely, with, with having you on the line, I, I want to get back to this subject. But I, I kind of have a, uh, I hope we're not losing you. Oops. Are you there, Paul? Oh, no. We're having technical difficulties on, uh, on Skype. Uh, the, uh, I think the, uh, the satellites have been frozen, so let me, uh, try to get Paul back. I want to, uh, obviously what I really want to talk to Paul about before we start talking about how we're going to fix this mess is I want to talk about how, uh, the mess that we're actually in and that is going to uh if i can uh, get paul back are we gonna find paul again come on we want to call paul back with all right we're gonna try this one more time guys yeah, I don't know how many times this is going to happen, and I am uh, apologize for this. Let's see if we can get the satellites. Uh, I hope... Nobody's on the Internet. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I, I, I was hoping that Kim Jong-un hadn't uh, sent off an EMP and blown us off of the... Uh, blown us off the map. We're still waiting to get your face back. If okay, you I, I should be back now. Okay. Well, we, there you are. But anyway, as I was just, that, that was a very good place for it to break anyway, because if, for people who are familiar with my, with, with my quote interviews, is I always like to look at the place we are on the planet before we start talking about uh, where we're going. Okay, right. so let's. I, and I cannot think of a better day than December thirty first, twenty seventeen, to look at where we are on this planet. And of course, Mike, when, uh, you seem like you're a gentleman, unlike most of the people I interview on my on my <laughs> I channel. So I, I don't 
don't know if you use four-letter words, but my question that I always start with is, 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 is Paul, uh, number one, are we fucked? And number two, if we are, how fucked are we right now? And good God, just going through your list of, of titles on your videos. I, I mean, we're... We've got it coming at us so many ways. Go ahead and give us your top five biggest threats to planet Earth here on the last day of 2017. How do you line them up? Well, I guess I mean I mean the threats are kind of kind of different, right? We can talk about threats like 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 uh, you know your your president. Um, could could just wake up one morning and press a bunch of buttons instead of instead of making coffee. You know, he might hit the wrong button and fire off. You know, start a <laughs> nuclear war, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, or he'll be tweeting and somebody will tweet back and annoy him, and he'll just he'll he'll, he'll call the military and say, "Here's the coordinates. Fire off something there, right?" <laughs> so so we have Donald. Person. We have Donald Trump as a major threat to the planet. I want so, one that's. I, yeah, so I would say, you know, so we can talk about sort of unpredictable threats or episodic threats that nobody can, you know, it can just happen, right? The ability is there to happen, the capabilities happen to happen, and, and that's that's something, you know, that, I mean... And how do you calculate the the risk of that? You can try different ways. Anyway, that's the that's right up there. Um, I don't know if the order is one or five or whatever, but it's in the top five for sure. Um, so you know, I mean, really associated with that is the, the, the threat of nuclear war is, is is still there. I mean, you know, it, it's actually riskier probably now than it was. Um, during oh, generally during the Cold War, although during the Cold War there were times that were a lot riskier than it is now in terms of the nuclear threat. Right? I mean, the U.S. actually had had the bombers in the air with yeah. nukes on board, heading you know heading for Russia. You know, during the missile Cuban Missile Crisis, and they were sort of they were they were put on hold. You know, out of Russian airspace. Um, the U.S., uh, you know, two planes collided and the bombs dropped out. Um, the U.S. accidentally dropped uh, some bombs over a city in North Carolina. Two older parts failed. They didn't detonate. Those are H bombs. Well, any of this can, can, can happen again in the next five minutes. Uh, I was actually looking for, for climatic threats, like the, the we, we no, have the know, Arctic death spiral, the methane yeah. bomb, the equatorial I'm, I'm, I'm whatever. Heading, I'm heading there, but the nuclear thing, I, everybody should read Eric Sloshberg's book because it, it has a lot of declassified stuff from the Cold War. I mean, the Russians fired a nuke at the U.S., from a submarine, but the, the missile exploded and sank the sub. That's the sub that was excavated by Howard Hughes as a globe, the, yeah, yeah. you know, under the guise of fighting mineral. So anyway, that's all, that's a threat that's always there. Um, there's also, you know, the threat of, um, the threat of climate, there's always the threat of, uh, you know, a huge methane burst coming up. You know, the Arctic is warming so fast, we're losing sea ice, we're going to have, you know, have no sea ice in the summer, uh, you know, blue ocean event, probably 2020, 2021, you know, in the next five years, certainly, I would say, the way it's heading, um, unless the trends turn around, the trends are all showing that it's where we're going. Um, so that will disrupt the jet streams even more. The extreme weather events will increase. You know, that will hit the global food supply, I think, probably. That's the biggest way it will affect us if there is no methane pulse. If there's a methane pulse, you know, the warming, is, the, the rapid accelerated warming is going to affect everything on the planet quickly. Countries will go very defensive. They'll shut their borders to immigration. It will be a free-for-all sort of thing. Um, you know, I, I, I think the way the U.S. is heading, they're, 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 they're breaking up. Uh, like, it reminds me of Six Million Dollar Man, you know, Steve Austin zipping along. Yeah. We're breaking up. We're breaking up. <laughs> this is what the U.S. is doing. They're like Steve Austin. Can we, re can we rebuild them, you know? <laughs> um, this is exactly what's happening. I mean, I, I sort of joke with people. I say, we don't need the, the Internal Revenue Service. Get rid of them. They're like the middleman. People should just write checks to the military in the U.S., That's right? That's kind of what they, we're they, doing, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, uh, you know, other threats, 
of course, there's always the asteroid threat, right? The, but, you know, we're pretty, pretty good at detecting things up in the sky. So unless something's coming at us directly from the sun, which is low probability, right? If it comes from any other direction, we can pretty much see it years <laughs> ahead of time and uh, do something about it. But if it's coming directly from the sun, we can't really see it too well. But we do have satellites um, sort of at the edge of the, you know, sort of uh, 90 degrees to it. You know, when a satellite passes the equator or something, if the, you know, depending on where the sun is, um, it, they can see it at an angle, you know, and detect. So we're getting better at detecting stuff coming from the, the sun direction but we're not there yet. Um, so that's always a threat. And then the idea of a super volcano, right? Um, you know, Yellowstone's a super volcano, a super, uh, you know, uh, has the potential to detonate. In fact, the U.S., um, the, the Russians, the, the USSR, Soviet Union, targeted nukes, H-bombs at Yellowstone. Are you the serious? Idea is, you know, that really did happen? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, I mean, more bang for the buck, right? <laughs> I have never, I, right, if you hit, more bang for the buck, yeah, really, a blowing up the yeah, Yellowstone yeah, so, Superbucket. Uh, yeah, like an H-bomb or two in Yellowstone, it would probably shear off enough of the surface material, lower the pressure, the shock wave, it would probably trigger uh, Yellow, the super volcano, right? So, you know, you could do that for any volcano for that matter, any volcano that sort of looks like it's about to go. <laughs> You know, if you nuke the side of them, if you not cause a landslide and nuke the side of the volcano, it would trigger an eruption for sure, right? No, but you're so, not promoting no, this. I, I want to make okay. sure. Are, are you advocating this? No, I'm position? not advocating okay. this. No, see? Okay, we well, want to make I sure. I talk about possibilities, right? <laughs> I talk about, about I mean, I don't advocate a lot. What I do advocate is my three-legged bar stool. Right, slash fossil fuel emissions. Well, uh, we're, we're, we'll, 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 we'll get we'll get to your bar stool and then and, and SRM. Yes, we yeah. will, we'll get to that in just a minute. But I will, I want to steer this into uh, again. I it, you know it's so overwhelming. I'm just going to go. Let's just go over here to your. Uh, have you ever? What, what's overwhelming? It's, you're, it's listen, simple, listen to some. Like, listen to I. Th this is your homepage on YouTube right now, this minute. Uh, let's see, wild weather and risk, Arctic and Antarctic sea ice mayhem, Arctic sea ice physical challenges, unprecedented collapse of the Arctic Beaufort gyre, talking up a storm. Here's the equatorial atmospheric super rotation, Earth tipping elements, new kid on the block, no new normal as climate mayhem spikes up, climate tipping points from cascading feedbacks. I'm, I'm two lines into your into your homepage. Uh, I think you see what I'm yeah. saying. That's a load of that. That's a load of doom, and I'm not even sure you. Uh, I don't know how to get you full screen again. There you are. Do you even consider yourself a doomer? Uh, no, not at all. Not at all. No, no, I, no, I, 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 I don't because um, I, I think. Well, okay, let me let me rephrase that. Um, if we continue, you know, if if humans on this planet uh, continue just business as usual, burning as much fossil fuels as possible and stuff, yeah. then I'm pretty close to being a doomer, I guess. But I have to think that there, there, there's a little iota of, of collective, you know, a little iota of collective intelligence um, among humanity. And when our back is to the absolute wall, we have absolutely no other choice. You know, we can turn on a dime and react. And I think that's going to happen soon um, with climate change. Um, and my guess for the timing would be uh, when we uh, have the, the blue ocean events. You know, it'll happen the first year. If we don't do anything after we have it the first year, you know, maybe there's no sea ice for a month or a couple of weeks, and then within a couple of years, it's gone two or three months of the year. Within a decade, it's gone year round. I would think we wouldn't wait for the year round because extreme weather events are gonna skyrocket and things are just gonna get so out of hand and the food supply is threatened. But, you know, that's when our back is to the wall. So you don't, you don't think our back is you 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 are not considering the situation here on the final day of 
2017, you would not describe our backs as against the wall quite yet? I don't think the pain is there enough. I mean, you go to the, like, the public's still ignoring it to a large extent. I mean, more and more people are being picked off. You know, the weak are starting to uh, be culled, right? The, the weak of the, you know, the, the uh, stragglers in the herd are being culled. You know, look at, uh, you, know, you know, look at e even even parts of, uh, you know, even full Puerto Rico we can talk about, right? Um, can you see me still or did you lose me? I don't um, know how to get your, uh, I, I, I never figured out how to get the full screen back. I'm not much of a technician, okay. but, I, but I like this picture of you sitting on the bench on the top of your, so I've got you sitting on your bench in the flood okay. and a smaller picture of your, I have no idea right. how to make this okay. full screen again. Okay, though. so, yeah, so, um, yeah, I, the pain's just not there for the majority of people, right? I mean, people aren't dropping like flies yet from climate change. Well, they, they are, but it's in China, for example, the air pollution and stuff, uh, lots of people, but, you know, not a small fraction of the population. I don't know, I mean... You know, there, there needs to be a lot more pain, obviously. I mean, I would have thought people would have been more intelligent collectively, but, you know, they, they, they I mean, it looks like there's a lot more in the media about it. There's a lot about renewables and uh, different techniques and stuff. There's still people up in arms. Uh, people are coming around to the idea that we need to um, slash fossil fuel emissions, right? So, but it's still talk, talk, talk and not doing. Um, although there is some, um, you, you, you know, the, you know so, so the pain has to get more severe. Um, people are talking about, you know, most of the public is not against uh, things like carbon dioxide removal, if we can figure out ways to remove it, because that's bring us back to where we were, you know, call it climate restoration. You know, we've gone from to an unstable climate. How do we restore, bring some stability and restore it, right? So that's one of the ways, but it's not enough. Right? It's not enough because losing the Arctic sea ice, we're in a different world, um, a very much different world. We're rocketing up to a much warmer world. So there, there, we haven't even scratched the surface of ideas. I mean, the, the British government, uh, some scientists in the UK tried to do an experiment called SPICE a number of years ago. They wanted to raise up a balloon, have a pump and a nozzle and make some clouds with just spraying water. And it was shut down. Oh, it's geoengineering. It's scary. So the video I did on, I, I did a video on this top secret project near Ottawa, you know, geoengineering experiment. And the one where yesterday. You make some cloud yeah. And you, yeah, exactly. So this is, uh, you know, this is uh, like, there, there, there's not, like, this isn't scary stuff. We do it all the time. Now, do you honestly right. believe, Paul? This. I mean, I watched that video. Do you, do you honestly believe, uh, in your heart, brother, that that video you showed yesterday uh, is going to turn this, uh, is going to turn whatever the one down in the equator, whatever that thing is, in the methane burst and the collapsing ice shelves? It's, it, it, it's, it's, is that enough to turn this freight train around? Do you honestly no. believe that? No, no, of course not. It's not enough. But you, you still know, we have to the, scale the, it up. The question is, I mean, can, can any of this stuff be uh, be be scaled up to the from the seat from the carbon capture to uh, let, let, let's talk about the innocent ones first that more people are going to shrug their shoulders like that one you did the 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 ones that don't involve dropping and blowing chemicals into the stratosphere let's talk about those options do we have a Right now, the the technology to do this and the scale, and B, is there the political will to uh, even if we have the technology to to do spend the money and the energy necessary? Uh, looking as we start into twenty eighteen. Yeah, well, I guess um, you know when when the pain is enough for the public. Right, um, and and when and so I'm saying, you know, we need to declare a global climate change emergency. You know, when food supplies, like we should do it now, but our backs, not, there's not enough people with their backs to the walls. 
so it'll be delayed and pushed off and pushed off and pushed off. You know, the dawn's always darkest, uh, the, the night's always darkest just before the dawn, right? So we're not there, it's not the darkest yet. Um, uh, you know, it is if you follow what's going on with all of the, you know, the social media and the news groups and all the different stuff. But, you know, most people have no idea. They don't follow this stuff. It's only a small fraction of us. When there's enough people that, you know, get really worried about it, then we declare a global climate change emergency. So then what can we do? Well, it depends on how long we've left it, right? If we cross a tipping point and the temperature starts skyrocketing, then we need to cool the planet like ASAP right immediately um, on short notice so you know you, get, you know i could i could do it in a month or two oh really right? i could do, i could do it in a if i had unlimited if i had resources if i had i i would just outfit some strato tankers you know the big huge tankers that refuel fighter aircraft you know they would go up into the arctic and they would spray sulfur into the uh, stratosphere and you know, we, we know that the planet will cool, right? If we actually put sulfur up, and it's not a huge amount of sulfur compared to what spews out of uh, smokestacks from coal burning power plants and has been doing that for decades and decades, right? So this, we can cool the planet, volcanoes do it. We can cool the planet, the whole planet, right? Whether we spray at the equator or, or you know, but people, you know, we won't talk about the politics of you know, people that think we're doing this already, which no scientists think. In fact, you know, go to the Google AGU, find the, the, the proceedings of the AGU, 24,000 scientists, not a single one of them was talking about chemtrails, right? They don't- we're So not you're not, I just, just want to make just, sure for the record, so, you're- Anyway, in an emergency, we could cool the planet quickly. That's not the best way. I mean, we want to use more innocuous ways and not have to do it so quickly. Like if we started, you know, ahead of, you know, gave ourselves, like started doing it now, basically, we could do marine cloud break. So marine cloud brightening, that would, that, that does not, that does not involve tanker, we, we have tankers of uh, slow down, but hopefully it picks back up again. Okay. It's probably just usage, you know, the internet's slow because it's the day before Christmas, nobody's, or day before New Year's, nobody's working, everybody's on the internet, so that, that's, that's all. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's what it's what you're saying, brother. That that we that we're listening now. Obviously, uh, you, you're probably not familiar with who the hell I am from from anybody else walking down the street. Can you hear me? Yeah, you, we've lost your picture, but it's all right. We we still we got your uh, Skype little guy next to you sitting in, in the bench. Uh, so you you it sounds like you honestly believe that the and let, let's get let's cut to the chase the solar radiation management what some people would call chemtrails uh perhaps mistakenly but isn't that what they are and do you honestly believe the risks of doing that are 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 are, are worth we it have a, uh, we have some network uh, slowdown you can hear me. Oh yeah, you're you you're coming hear me, through so. fine. You're you're, um, you're coming through you know, fine. Otherwise, but marine cloud brightening is pretty innocuous. Like it, it, it's no different from making snow on a ski hill, really. <laughs> you know, so that you can ski. Um, you know, that's that's changing the uh, albedo, right? That's like a form of geoengineering, if you like. That's kind of uh, what you were doing in your video last night. You take some pumps and you spray seawater. Uh, you, you, you have these pumps for, for So guys, I <clears throat> I love it. I was just getting in the uh, into the conversation with Paul Beckwith, your old eco uh, catastrophist. Uh, Luddite was, you know, getting into the whole conversation about do we have the technology to geoengineer a planet with solar radiation management without fucking something up more than the problem. But of course, the Skype went dead because we don't have the technology to have a decent Skype connection. So I thought that was a perfect place to wrap up 
part one right at 30 minutes so we are going to come back in part two of this video where Paul Beckwith is going to convince Hambone Little Tail that uh, geoengineering is uh, the, the, the answer to saving the planet. So come back for the second half. I'll put the link here at this one and come back and uh, catch the second half of Paul Beckwith telling us how to save the planet. Coming right back at you in one minute when I go find Paul. Bye guys.